Okay. Let's do record. Okay, what are you doing today? Good morning, pharmacy. Stephanie, you done? Turned in your paper. Okay. We are going to do percentages and allegation the next two days. Okay. If I finish percentage today, I'd be happy. But if I do that, that means we only have Friday. So I may have to use tomorrow's class. You okay with that? Uh, to do and uh, highlight more of this particular topic. I do drinks, Put your drinks away. Percentage is one of the most common questions for both PTC and EXCPT. I your exit exam is a great practice for the PTCE. And you notice they try to squeeze in questions which you don't realize are percentage questions and allegation questions. Flow rate is sequence three. I'm telling you this because I took both, okay? And I've seen both and a lot of students came back telling the same thing, okay? May not seem percentage right away. You look at it, look at Gina nodding, okay? Mm -hmm. yes, her test had a lot of that probably, okay? It may not seem like percentage right away, but it is, okay? On the PTCE, your math, a lot of your math questions, usually fall under patient safety. Why do you think so? <laughs> exactly, right? If you do the math wrong, you're not making the patient safe. Okay. Percentage, I keep talking about percentage, but not as a general term. Percentage as a measurement of the strength or concentration of the drug. When you say strength of a drug or a substance, it's exactly the same as concentration. In the past couple of weeks, especially with freshmen or months for you guys who've been here a while, okay, the strength of the drug that you usually see are in what? Milligrams or units or international units, right? Okay, here comes another measurement of strength or a concentration, okay? When I'm talking percentage as a measurement of strength or concentration of a drug or substance, okay, in a test, it doesn't specifically tell you if that substance is liquid, solid, semi-solid, okay? So I'm giving you tips. Solid dos dosage forms are your tablets and capsules. In a compounding setting, we use a lot of powders to encapsulate and make it a drug. So it's easier to administer and take by our patients. Powders, tablets, and capsules are solid dosage forms. Liquid dosage forms can be elixirs, solutions, suspensions, tinctures, okay? Maybe it's uh, not so familiar with you because that's what you're gonna do next sequence, okay? It's gonna be fine. You're gonna make lotion screens. Okay. And then there's also the semi-solid, AKA some hybrid dosage forms, okay? They can be measured either as a weight because they're semi-solid, or some companies, some manufacturers, pharmaceutical companies measure them as a volume, or they can have both. That's why sometimes your lotion you will see in weight, okay, and in volume as well. These things I've been saying, I don't remember saying this slowly and in detail in the previous videos, right? So it gets better each time. I'm glad you asked me to record. So 
percentages on a test when you see this because i told you that they don't say what exactly that dosage form is sometimes you're lucky you're going to get something in a parenthesis but not always the case okay sometimes it will say percentage weight over weight not always the case sometimes it's just percentage so you're going to get because we don't have a physical chemistry class which is a class in pharmacy school you don't know how they look like you don't know how not yet okay you don't know if they're in liquid form you don't know if they're a chemical in this reagent model you don't know the color of it so if it's just a word problem it's hard to picture but i'll tell you how to make educated guesses okay this don't make it a crutch it is not always written in the text okay but your percentage or strength of the drug or concentration may come as a weight over weight, volume over volume, or percentage weight over volume. And you will see them written like, like that if they want to tell you that, hey, this is it. You follow it? Yes? Most of the time, these are invisible. Now, if it's weight over weight, that means picture this. You're mixing two powders as active ingredients. You have to mix them thoroughly and evenly so you're giving the exact amount to the patient. Weight in terms of percentage, no matter what happens, will always be in grams. So for this part, it's grams over grams. No matter what, it will always be in grams. So don't let the test question fool you. Oh, Ms. L, yeah, I know that it's grams over grams, but my options are in milligrams. You're gonna be stuck because of that? No, that's why we taught you conversion at the beginning, you just convert. But know that if these are invisible and you're talking two powders or two solids combined, once we get to compounding, I'm going to tell you, oh, this tablet needs to be triturated, meaning you're going to use mortar and pestle to make the tablet into a powder form, okay? You're going to see those things. It will click even more, okay? So weight over weight will always be a measurement of weight for percentage of grams over grams. How do you calculate for percentage? You multiply this by 100, right? That's your percentage. That's how you calculate percentage, isn't it? Oy. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to stop teaching if I'm not talking to anybody. It's hard, okay? But this can also be translated exactly the same if you put grams over 100 grams. Agree? You don't have to multiply it by 100 anymore, right? That's exactly the same, right? So whichever one will work easily, I'm okay with that, but you got to know that in percentage, your numerator will always be your solute, which means in this case, weight of solute in grams, and your denominator will always be solution, total weight of the solution or a compound. Can you follow? Don't let the test question trick you. It's not solvent. Okay. Now let me discuss this once we get to here, because there's going to be volume involved. So here, if you want to be more technical, the weight of solute over the total weight of your compound. So we don't call it a solution, but solid, right? Think about mixing two solid substances. We also use this for ointments. How does that work? A powdered substance needs to be mixed with your Vaseline, which is a semi-solid base, petroleum jelly, to make an ointment. Picture that. I'm going to teach you how to do the flip and fold method in making ointments. So fun. Right? So now you can picture you're making an ointment. There's a powder active ingredient, and there's your base in solid form as well. That's why the percentage weight over weight comes into play. 
That's when it comes into play. We follow. Okay. So solute over total. You have to remember as well that solute is your active ingredient and the total is the total amount or volume of your solution or your mixture or your compound. Follow. There's also what we call percentage of volume over volume. Now this is mixing two liquids. Or what? Two liquids that are different drugs, two liquids that have di different concentration, same liquid, different concentration. Okay. The final product is liquid. That's why it's percentage volume over volume. Okay. So what do we use for volume? No matter what, it's going to be ML over ML. Claro. Entiende? Yeah. Next. ML over ML. So you want to get the percentage. What do you do? You multiply this by 100. I'm teaching you possibilities because if it doesn't show, oh, I know that anything can be can be converted to percentage. Okay. Another one would be so if this is grams over 100 grams, what would this be? Get ml over 100 ml, and this will still be your volume of solutes. This time it's correct over total volume of your solution. Know that the denominator will always be total. This is when I discuss solution. Pause right here. Picture the, um, picture this and the beaker, okay? Put a powder in here. Powder is easily dissolved in water. Is your powder and is your water? So this is your water, and this powder is your solute. It can win point. The substance to be dissolved is solute. The dissolving medium is solvent. And once this solute is dissolved, makes one phase. The total is what you call a solution. So I said this gets tricky. So for percentage volume over volume, you'll see that a final final mixture or compound is going to be in liquid form, thus solution. Okay. Now I introduce that because we're going to get to the weight over volume which the final product is also in liquid form. How do you know that in a test? You can't, especially if they don't give this, right? So you gotta know those terminologies. Solute is the substance to be dissolved. Solvent is the dissolving medium. And solution is the final product. Let's ask, which one do you identify? How do you identify if you're both liquid? Which one is the solute? Which one is the solvent? The water is solvent. The one is the what? The one with like the solute. The one with like the water is solvent. Correct. Okay. But another way to put it is whichever one has less is the solute. The more one is the solvent because you're dissolving it. That's a dissolving medium. Know that the universal solvent is water. 
water. Okay, I want you to know this, okay? Because it will lead to this as well. So in terms of percentage weight over volume, what do you think the units will be? Will always be gram over mm. I'm gonna make it a percentage, what do you do? Multiply it by 100. Is gram over 100 ml the same as gram over ml times 100? Yes, exactly the same. Follow? And it's still going to be the same. Weight of solute over total volume of solution. If you know this, if you master this, there's not a single problem in your test. It's not solved. Okay. There's also one thing that you want to remember. The strength of your water is zero percent. And when you hear a pure substance, a pure substance will always be a hundred percent. This thing, if you know, not a single problem on percentage is going to get by you. She's going to smile there right now. I know what she did. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you a tip. Pure is 100%. <laughs> Look at the faces of the ones who took that exit. <laughs> so I like, I still don't have an idea right now because <laughs> I was absent. <laughs> okay, but this is your guide. That's why I said you better watch those videos that I have and they're the percentage because this is the foundation of your allegation and even your dosage calculations, okay? Can you convert decimal to percentage? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Can you percent? Can you convert fraction to percentage? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can you convert a whole number to percentage? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you gotta know those things too. Because sometimes the strength on the PTCE is tricky. They give it to you in ratio or fraction. What do I mean by that? One is to 20,000 strength. Easy, don't sweat it. Convert this to fraction. And you just said you can convert a fraction into percentage. So what do you do? You can multiply that by 100. Or you can use this in the ratio proportion to get this. Okay? We'll get there, a little bit more complicated. But can you understand the concept of percentage when it comes to strength or concentration of a drug? Yes. Yes? Do you understand the term solute, solvent, and solution? I say don't be tricked, because sometimes the question on the PTCE is only how much solvent was used. It's not in this equation. But what you can do, if you know the total solution, you subtract the amount of solute and you get the part of the solvent. See that? Interesting, right? Okay. So I started with percentage because allegation okay, is our next topic. And I want you to understand it's not alligator. And it's spelled at A L L I. G A T I O N. Okay. When this becomes an E, that's not it. That's a K. That's a long terminology. Very good. Our previous faculty coordinator, every time it's sequenced with it, he calls me. Oh my God, what is this allegation thing that students are complaining about? I said, Well, you can't help them with that because <laughs> he was a previous cop. You can't help him with that. That's not the allegation you're thinking about. Okay. When it comes to math, it's allegation with an I. The problem with allegation is in a pharmaceutical setting, what's crazy is there's two strengths, but you don't have what the doctor wanted. There's a higher strength and a lower strength. And you got to make the middle strength. So how much of the higher strength do you need and how much of the lower strength do you need? That's basically it. 
Yeah. So it's not a one step process, right? But there are ways to do that. Before we get there, okay, I want you to know that percentage in an IV bag is also applied. There may be a couple of differences okay, when it comes to IV. So before allegate, and I told you, my goal today is to finish the percentage part at least. Remember this term? Solute, solvent, and solution. Okay. A D, I want you to know that D stands for dextrose, capital D. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna erase this now. Bye bye. I wish I had words everywhere. Oh, yeah. Right? I can just go walk, walk, walk around. Yeah. Amazing. And you know what? I'm always very itchy after a class because of this dust. Okay. B stands for dextrose. Double U, we're talking IV stands for. Water. Most commonly used electrolytes in an IV bag. Who did chemistry? Hands up. High school. That's okay. <laughs> High school. <laughs> What's NA? Sodium. That's the symbol for sodium because it came from the word natrium. Okay, with see a chlorine or chloride, okay? So when you mix it, it becomes a chloride. So NaCl would be sodium chloride. Chlor. <laughs> NS stands for normal saline. Favorite question on the PPT as well. Very much so. Why? Because people think okay, the percentage is the same for everything. Okay, but you have to know that normal saline is equivalent to 0 0.9% sodium chloride. So a normal saline is not the same as sodium chloride. Can you follow? Because a normal saline, no matter what, will always be equivalent to a less than 1% sodium chloride, 0.9% sodium chloride. Follow? So don't tell me NS is sodium chloride. There's a big difference. There's a really big difference. So you got to remember, when it's normal saline, these three terminologies come up on the PPC okay, as a question. This means that it is isotonic. Same tonicity as the blood. When it's below 0 0.9, say for example, 0.45% sodium chloride. This is what we call hypo. Tonic. This is one of the questions, or three or five of the questions on my top 1,000 frequently asked questions on the PTCE. I'm plugging. <laughs> okay. So if it's above 0 0.9, say for example, 23% sodium chloride, what do you think this is called? Solution. Can you follow? What happened to Alyssa Shins? She died. 
Tell me the story. Who did a decision? <laughs> Either you or Jed. So it happened to Alyssa. Isn't this the mistake that happened? Or Alyssa Shin is zinc. Emily is sodium chloride. Emily's law in Ohio. Okay. There's two cases of babies that we talk about during law. Okay. Because one is here in town. Okay. Alyssa, what happened to Alyssa? Alyssa. That was a topic a couple of days ago. Milligrams of zinc were given to her instead of micrograms of zinc. Okay, I always discuss that because this is in Vegas. Okay, well, that's at least one of the many, uh, one of the, the ones that made it in the news. What about the ones that don't make it? Okay, Emily's Law is a big one in Ohio. Okay, Emily's Law is more of this problem. Why, what happened, Jen? That would be um, oh, okay. I know who presented what. I know it's both babies for you, too. Okay. Uh, the overdose of the sodium chloride because instead of grabbing an available bag, she grabbed an empty, empty bag and went smarty pants. Yeah. So she made it from scratch. She didn't know very much, very well. For okay. So it was an overdose of sodium chloride. This is why I take my time to talk about this. And this is why this is one of the very questions on the PPE because of this. Normal saline is not the same as sodium chloride. You got to remember that the normal saline will always be 0.9% sodium chloride. On the PTCE, they don't put that. This is equivalent to 0.9%. They'll just put NS in there. Can you follow? Okay. But they just put NS in there, and you don't know that it's 0 0.9. You can't, like, why is there only one, one variable? You can't solve this. You can if you know that it's 0 0.9%. So you can right. Is that clear? Okay. So picture this a sodium chloride solution. I told you I'm an old school pharmacist, right? Okay. So when I was doing swing shift in a hospital, one of our jobs in the old days is to make IV bottles. I'm not that old school where I make the bottle. I met some pharmacists who are old, old. They pulled bottles and glass tubings to make ampules. Not that old. So the bottles are ready. I just have to measure the salt, put it inside the bottle, and add water. QS add quantum sophistiac addendum. Add enough quantity to make it a thousand ml. <laughs> Sorry, smiling. There was an abbreviation on the exit about that. Okay, so that was my job. One of my the first things I do when I walk in swing ship. Okay, I go straight to the back and make IV bottles. So I'll measure the correct amount of salt, add the water, seal that, and then I'll make cases of that, you know, the, uh, the push cards that we have. And then an orderly will pick that up, take it for sterilization, autoclaving, and then the next day it comes back, it's ready. Because during that time, I mean, bags were just starting. So there's not a, a much supply of IV bags. So in old movies, you will see those bottles getting hang upside down with a wire, that was it, that was my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I did have that experience, so it's fun. Now, looking back, I can tell you stories like that. So I measure the salt, add the water, okay? So if I'm te when I'm teaching sodium chloride normal saline, I always tell the students, think about a salt solution. We call it brine. Same, the solute will be your salt, the solvent will be your water. Will it dissolve fully? Yes. Okay, when it dissolves fully, it's one phase. Another two terminologies that come up on the PTCE. So when it dissolves fully and it's just one phase, how do you call that? A homogeneous solution. One phase. So when it's two phases, 
like a lotion will separate because it's oil and water, water and oil, and emulsion becomes this too gets thrown in the PTCE every now and then. Okay. Hetero. H-E-T-E-R-O. Okay, clear? So it will be just a liquid. When I'm talking about dextrose, it's sodium chloride or normal saline, it's all dextrose will be your sugar. Same, the solute will be the sugar, AKA dextrose, and the solvent will be water to make a sugar solution. A sugar solution is what? When you put heat on it, simple syrup, exactly. Okay. So there are different uses for these IV bags. You don't just replace one IV bag with the other because that's what's available. Very important to know that. What if the patient's diabetic? <laughs> Those are the same IV bags that we use. You'll have dextrose or sodium or sodium chloride or chlorine. There's another one that I haven't mentioned, LR. LR stands for lactated ringer's solution or ringer's lactate. That's another one that you may encounter IV bags. I thought I'd throw that in before I start the calculation. So let's start calculating the simple ones. Say for example, this is a 100 ml bag, okay? And it's a B5W, B, F, raising the board, bye-bye. You still got time? Good job. Okay. Where's my black ink? I'm hiding from me. Okay. B five double year. This means dextrose. 5% in water. So if I ask you convert this abbreviation, that's what I want to see. Dextrose, 5% in water, capital D. Okay? There's a percentage. It's telling you that there's 5% of dextrose in water. I want to help you visualize it. It means that there's 5 grams of dextrose, 5 grams of sugar, in this 100 ml solution, correct? Remember, your percentage weight over volume, it's grams per ml, right? Okay, then times 100 if you wanna get percentage, okay? It means that there's five grams of dextrose for every 100 ml D5W solution. Right away, when I see that, D5W, I put this right here. So go back to my story. What if I was making this in the old days where I had to get a bottle? Now it's fancy, okay? So how much do you think sugar is in dextrose 5% water, one liter bag? One liter bag. What do you do first? Correct. And where do I put that? Okay, what's on the denominator? Good job, Jonathan. 1,000 ml solution. What do I put on top? Very good. That's why I said, you want to remember those two things I wrote on the board on percentage. Because you may use the times 100 later on 
but this might be easier to use right off the bat. So you can set up your ratio proportion. So given that, what's your X grams? What is it? 50 grams of dextrose. Can you follow? Which means this IV bag, one liter, has 50 grams of dextrose or sugar to make it D5W, the portion. Can you follow? Is that clear? Easy, right? Ratio proportion, no other way. So on a quiz or a test, when you see this, usually how it's written is blank. This will be weight off and then black solute. You should put 50 grams and you should put dextrose here as your solute. Can you follow? That's in a fill in the black quiz. Clear? Okay. But in the PTC ELB, multiple choice. So the one of the options will be 50 G or 50 grams. Clear? Okay. That's easy for dextrose. It can be 10%. I have a practice problem. So wait. That's easy. It can be 10%. But let's do normal daily this time. Same. That's why I didn't erase it. It's all you. But it's the same as in salt. However, what did I tell you about normal saline? Normal saline, no matter what, will always be 0.9% sodium chloride. It's less than one. It's dangerous. Okay. So this IV bag, 100 ml, says it's normal saline. Right off the bat, I should put 0.9 G sodium chloride, correct? For every 100 ml solution. That tells you right off the bat that there's 0.9 grams of sodium chloride or salt in this 100 ml bag. But that's not always the case. Sometimes your bag comes in a 250 ml solution, 500 ml solution, and 1000 ml solution. Okay, so if you want to know how much is in this 500 ml bag, how much sodium chloride in this 500 ml bag, what should the equation be? I'll be use ratio proportion because that's easy. 500 ml at the bottom, good job. What's on top? Xg. Always, I always put sodium chloride. Why? If you put in as I'll mark you wrong. So make it a habit, okay? What's my X? Cross multiply 0 0.9 times 500 divided by a thousand would be 4.5 grams. And I will put sodium chloride, not NS. Even if I say this a million times and I'm like a broken record, students still put NS, okay? Take note, when you're asked weight of solute, I should see 4.5 grams as a weight on a quiz, and then your solute should be sodium chloride, not NS. Is that clear? Okay, let me tell you a story before I give you your practice um, worksheet. I had a student who worked at Clark County Detention Center, okay? And there was an order for half normal saline. And then half the nurse came and she said, why are you giving me 0.45% sodium chloride when the order was half normal saline? She had to explain politely that a normal saline is 0.9% sodium chloride. So a half normal saline would be 0.45%. You see that? She was expecting 50%. And that's why this is a problem in the field. And that's why this is a favorite question on the VTC, because it can lead to possible medication error. And this falls under patient safety. And it's heavily weighted on the PTC. Okay? That's why our students pass no problems. It's because these things I highlight, I know it's going to come up. Okay, now let's do some worksheets. 
Who's ready for worksheets? <laughs> I'm putting in worksheets on Blackboard. Okay. Get one and pass. Who understood it? We're just on percentage right now because this is the foundation for allegation. If I don't talk about this, it's going to be hard for me to talk about allegations. And 80% of people are visual. That's why I use the things so that you can picture. I tell you that this is sugar and this is salt. Okay. But it has to be proportionate. Okay, if this is a normal saline bag, it should have 0.9% sodium chloride. But how much of that? How much of the salt? Okay, is that clear? Was that slow enough? Yeah, was that easy enough to understand? Okay, here comes your worksheets. Let's see. If we get through this topic today, I'll be fine. Because the next one will be easy. This is the toughest and the most confusing to students, but I don't mind taking my time here because there's a good amount of questions on the PTC pertaining to percentage. Well, you agree, yeah, I will hold you. I'll, I'll remember that you said, yes, you can convert ratio to percentage. Yes, you can convert fraction to percentage. Ratio is still a strength. One is to 20,000 strength. That's a strength. That's a strength. Okay. Yeah. Do you need it? No. Okay. You can use that if that works for you. For ratio Remember, I said we go backward and we create formulas, work backwards, okay? Because I don't want you memorizing formulas. I want you to understand. It's easy to remember those formulas when you understand the concept. That? <laughs> it doesn't seem like I can check it. <sighs> After class, exit by um, freshman, freshman, I'm sorry, juniors, seniors. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, <laughs> okay, for uniformity purposes, percentages, one decimal place. Okay. Um, you can keep, I know you'll have some two, three decimal places. You can keep all of that for discussion purposes. Okay. But your final answer, if it's just one decimal place, follow the rule of rounding off is fine. So if you kept it three places, that's fine. I know the quarters and the.
Gracias. Thank 
Ready? Almost three pages. Not too bad. Do the first one. This is easy. And then the second and the third pages will be more than this. First one's only five pages. Continue with the rest. Want you to do the first five so you know you're on the right track. Okay, let's do the first five. Practice problems numbers one to five as requested by freshmen so that they know they're doing the right one. Okay, let's hear it from them. How many grams of sodium chloride are in a 250 ml bag of NS? Karen. Uh, 225 grams. We just killed somebody. So many times over there. Careful. You said 225 grams out of salt. That's how much overdose, two places. Is it 2.25? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> did you figure out what you did wrong? Yeah. Okay. It's 2.25 grams of sodium chloride. We got that one. Hands up. Okay. No, you're okay. 2.3. Like I said, you can do um, one decimal place. Okay. okay, for uniformity, make it two. Okay. But this, it can go like three, four places, I know. So I'll not, I won't, I won't mark here. 2.25 grams of sodium chloride. I always go by two places, hundreds. I always go by two places. Remember my instruction? Do everything to decimal places except for temperature. You just have to remember that. If there's no instruction on the test paper. Clear? Okay. Very, very dangerous. Now you know I'm a stick. Why I, I am a stickler when it comes to math, especially the way you write. Yes. Okay. Simple changes in habits can go a long way. Okay. Number two, Valentina. How many grams of sodium chloride are in a 250 ml bag of half normal saline? 1.13 grams of blank, because you can have that right, but the second blank is wrong, then you're wrong. It has to be NACL, not NS. I can't stress that enough, okay? So you, if you did 1.13 grams or 1.125 grams of NACL, you are correct, Telemundo, Telemundo. Number three, um, Ashley. <laughs> Things that come out of my mouth. <laughs> Zero point five six. You missed something. You missed something. Oh, grams. There you go. It's important because it can be milligrams. If the options were in milligrams, there's nobody stopping you from converting that. So it's zero point. Do not forget you're needing zeros. Zero point five six grams of sodium chloride NaCl or 0 0.5625 if you want to keep all of it for purposes of you understanding it. Who got that one? Hands up. I'm looking at hands of freshmen. So I think I did the two, two, five. I think I run it. Uh, 
My point twenty three. Where did the point twenty three have? Uh, because it was half of the NN. Quarter. Well, no, 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 sorry, let's say quarter. Uh, with two point. Do it again. Yeah, I'll do it. Because I only have zero point five six two five or zero point five six. Right. Before we move on. Oh, good. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> well, like, huh? like they're looking at you like like what Jen said. Please record. I'm speaking for them, but it's actually for her. She got the biggest FOMO I know. So for this one, I put 0 0.6. That's wrong. Right? It's okay. Because it's zero point five six six two five. Right. Okay. okay. So that's okay though. I don't Just for uniformity purposes, when you're taking a quiz, I said two decimal places. Done. Except for temperature, it's easier to remember. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. 56. It's fifty six. Would you do wrong? Uh, I did the. Well, it was like I rounded the the what's it called? Two five. The half the quarter. I rounded it because I thought that one was. Oh, the three instead of point yeah. twenty-five. No, don't round that. That's okay. a quarter. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's important. Now I understand. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the discrepancy number four. Okay, so because of that, two decimal places. That's it, except temperature. Okay, because he dropped it to one decimal place, the tenth place, and then it made a little difference. Yeah, not a big difference, but still made a difference. But for me to easily check it, let's just stick to the two decimal places, except for temperature. One, okay. Number four, okay, now it's UGU. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> grams. Very good, this, this time it's dextrose, 12.5 grams of dextrose. Who got this one, number four, hands up. Number five, how many grams of dextrose are in a 250 ml bag of D10W mark? Uh, 25 grams of dextrose. Very good, 25 grams of dextrose. Now you have a better understanding of solute, solvent, and solution. Continue, what are you staring at? Continue the rest of the pages. You're not yet done, right? <laughs> I just paused as requested by Jonathan so that you guys know that you did the right thing. Okay, now continue page. Ratios of IV bags. Um, how many questions? 15 questions. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass allegation problem so the other students don't get bored. But I think you'll we'll pause and wait for me to tell you. Allegations are getting passed around. Um, it was another instructor who wrote this particular package, it's no longer with us, but I still find it useful. However, I'm going to tweak it a little bit once I discuss it. Okay. The said, oh, I like the way you did it, ration proportion. Because I learned that you like ration proportion more. Okay. The packet is being passed around. Our lecture packet explanation of allegation. The next one, this you will have to answer. Okay. Allegation problems. Okay. <laughs> Seniors and juniors, this you don't have this one. Get one and pass. Say one, one for Matea. I have a set for Matea going here. Oh, perfect. Thank you for my Matea's absence. So good that we're recording. Extra, huh? There's an extra. You should have received. One allegation with a tic-tac-toe in the front and another one allegation problem set with vials in the front. You <laughs> 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 should have received two sets, one allegation that has a tic-tac-toe in the front and another one with vials. Another one with vials. You're welcome to start solving those problems, especially juniors and seniors. This one, practice problems, you already have them? You want a black one? The one I gave you for exit review. Yes, I, I
There should be 14 of that. So there's your that extra. Not enough? She didn't get a place. Oh, yeah, she did. Not enough? Okay, let me run it again. Fine, let's hear it here at the bottom. <laughs> I don't know because it was already set when it went in the copier. More here. I got more. one more. Again, you should have received two sets of packets, one allegation tic tac toe, and then one allegation with vials in the front. The one that you need to solve is the one with the vials in the front. That's the practice sheet. So juniors and seniors. Since you know allegation, you might want to jump to that particular packet. But of course, uh, one with tic tac toe is an extra, extra packet. You know what reference I like for allegation? Chapter three of your NPTA serial compounding um, ebook. Ebook, because it's in PDF form now, right? It comes in PowerPoint too. <laughs> Are we going to eat for 30 minutes first before the exit? I don't eat. <laughs> she's fast because she goes to work. Oh, you're off today? Well, I haven't left this classroom like longer than five minutes. So I need a few minutes. Okay. I need a few minutes to stay in my car, eat something, or breathe. This has been a busy day. We were nonstop. So we started at 12 30. Yeah. Exit, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. 12 30, 12 30. Stefan, you ready? Uh oh, I thought you know what? Exit. <clears throat> I don't know yet because I have like like this and then I still teach at night until Tuesday next week. And Miss J, I think, is planning on a PTO, so I'll have to pick up the night class as well. That's so why I don't want individuals. Oh, you can do that. When I'm, you can, I can't leave it with Miss Jay just here every day at night. I'm only here Tuesdays and Thursdays at night. But it doesn't matter what day you want to come at night because she's going to be here every night until, yeah, every night until the 28th. No, I'm here in the morning every day, but at night, you said, at night, I'm only here Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes you don't have to overthink, you just have to read. <laughs> Sarai's laughing because it's true. Ready? 15 IV bags question. Yes, now. Yes, freshman, how we doing? Almost? Okay. Um, three minutes. Yay. Yeah. I know. <laughs> The answer sometimes is in the problem or on the label. Next. No tutoring today because we're going to have an exit though. Okay. Tomorrow, I think right away as well. Happen. But I'm here at night too. Tuesdays and Thursdays. I only have a few students at night, so 
so you're going to continue. If you guys want. But on a normal circumstance after the 28th, what doesn't make sense anymore because your final exam for math is on Monday. After the 28th, I'm solely mourning. Unless Ms. J takes the time off. Only Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. I, I'm here, but Ms. J is here every night until the 28th. But we just come here after seven and we just show up and you know you want to come here after class you gotta let me know because i also run a class at night right yeah so i can't really sit down with you in the math and they're on sequence one yeah. oh. at night yeah. so time okay. tell you my schedule it's tuesday Oh, it's up tomorrow. Well, you should have time tomorrow. Can we do that? Yeah. And then probably one hour. We'll use the lab time tomorrow for math. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? I'm just waiting on the last. The last 15 problems. <laughs> What's today, Wednesday? Yeah. So I'm here, I'm proctoring the exit. That usually ends about three. Okay, here's another availability for me. Usually about, it ends about 2.30, three o'clock. If you can stick around, I can, oh, you know what? Would we be too loud if I have them on the side while you guys are taking the test? Because so I can do it. I don't know. Um, this is a little walking full mode here, right here. I'm on the video. day but they're their own world it's a good practice though for your exit that one and the ptc <laughs> why would i give it to you before the exit i gave you all all the videos you got it once i start uh presenting and lecturing all the more it's gonna click she can't stressing over it you're welcome to grab this IV bags and look at that. Okay, one more thing that you want to know, all IV bags are in a plastic bag, so they're considered sterile. Ready, ready. I want the freshmen to do, uh, answer these questions for me. Get ready. 
Is it an easy one? It's ratio and proportion. It's just like this. Very easy. But do not forget, fractions can be converted to percentage. Ratios can be converted to percentage. Ratios can be converted to fractions. So all of those can be used in a ratio and proportion setup. Ready? Two more. Ready or not, here I come. I'm gonna find you. I'm still recording. Oh, yeah, we're still recording. Okay, there you go. Okay, so this recording includes answers, huh? Don't give me your worksheet so you can go back and have answers to the record. I don't need them. I'm done checking homeworks. Mark, you okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. one, chunk by chunk, little by little, baby steps. I said, this is my goal today. Master this, okay? We still got tomorrow and Friday, finals Monday. This finals of different days throws me off. Because <laughs> before it's always just thing. You know what's our tech beauty? Ready, ready, ready. Is the answer, you guys ready? Can you give me a subscribe code? Like, I don't know what you For coffee. Coffee. I only had one. Practice problems. I want you to do this. Practice problems. Do the ones that you know that you can solve. Tomorrow, this is one of the agenda. One of the goals is to finish that whole practice final exam. Reason why seniors aren't helping me yet, they're still waiting for it to click, click, click fully. They're processing it themselves. We did a quick validation topic that's probably a few minutes before they're active. So they're also in that boat wherein they're figuring this out. But good year. You don't have to figure it out yourself. I think I can do tutoring while you take their test if you want to. Okay. We're going to have to be quiet. So we're going to talk on paper. Okay. <laughs> we just do what we got it. My schedule is just very, very, very tight right now. After the 28th, I can breathe a little. I've been MIA everywhere. Like people are texting me. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> the schedule. I'm skipping my own classes. You can do this. I know. I need to get faster. My self-defense class, I skip. My yoga classes, I skip. I'm here until 10 to 10 30. Like, even when the, you don't have afternoon classes, right? No. Um, we don't have afternoon classes, but it's tough. And then the next day I'm here again about that. And then I'm leaving again. 
this has been a problem with the, you having to come back again the next day and you're just leaving this way. <laughs> back again. I open it and I close. Okay. We're short one instructor, right? But it's not. <laughs> okay. This is how we're built. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> Ready now? Yeah. Please. Karen? Yeah? Yeah. Valentina? Ashley? Yeah. Just give a few questions, okay? And then you can start working on those practice problems because I want to go over them tomorrow. I don't want to be cut up at the middle of whatever practice problem. My agenda is to finish this, okay? And I think we're we're on that. Um, um, how many grams? of sodium chloride or in a 500 ml bag of ns number one karen uh 4.5 grams uh um nacl very good 4.5 grams of nacl who got this one hands up yeah okay number two valentina Correct. We've got nine grams of NACL. Okay, I don't think I'm picking on freshmen, huh? Yes, I'm picking on you. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you the story about the student who transferred? Because so. he doesn't like he doesn't like that I call on students. Like he transferred to a different instructor, and he still didn't. I mean, I was okay with that, right? But he still didn't finish. Yeah, I call everybody, but there's a reason why I'm calling freshmen a lot right now. Okay. Number three, Ashley. 0.45 grams of sodium chloride. Very good. 0 0.45 grams of sodium chloride. No mistake. So far, high. it's not NS. And you say the leading zero. Very, very good. Who got that one? Hands up. Okay. Number four, how many grams of sodium chloride are in a 500 ml bag of half normal saline? Jonathan. Uh, for four, it's 3.25. Of Good job. Who got that one? We have an understanding. Keep two decimal places or the hundredths place. Geo number five. How many grams of NACL are in a thousand ml or one liter bag of half normal saline? Uh, it's going to be 4.5 grams of sodium chloride. Oh, very good. No one has this yet. Who got that one? Hands up. Good job. Number six, Mark. How many grams of sodium chloride are in a 50 ml bag of half normal saline? Uh, 0.225 grams of sodium chloride. Yeah. Why is it not right? Oh, well, I, yeah, it's on my paper, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what's on your paper. So the, do it again. The correct answer is 0.225 grams of sodium chloride. Very good. Okay. Because I don't want you to have that habit. Okay, on the test, it always comes up. Your options will have leading zero and no zeros. Okay, you choose the one with a leading zero, PTCE, leading zero. So I want it to be a habit. That's why on the here, I apply that rule as well. Okay, 0 0.225 grams of sodium chloride because we said two decimal places, it can be 0 0.23. We had it that way. Good job. Number seven. Okay, let me call this the seniors. They're board now. How many grams of sodium chloride are in a 500 ml bag of quarter normal saline? Jen. <laughs> Just like you won't be well up as yawning. 1.125 grams of NACL. Very good. 1.125 or 1.13 since we agreed to decimal places grams of sodium chloride. Number eight. Roxy don't hide. <laughs> The more you hide, the more I assume you. The more you look away, the more I call you. Okay. Very good. Who got 2.25 grams of sodium chloride? We're almost there. Number nine. Jonathan. Yeah. 0.11 grams of sodium chloride. Who got that one? Hands up. Good job. Stefan, number 10. How many grams of dextrose? Or in a 500 ml bag of D5W. Okay. Number 12, back to you, Karen. I didn't do that one. Okay. 13, Valentina. Um, 50 grams of dextrose. Who got 50 grams of dextrose? Yeah, who? I saw a hashtag. 
13. Okay, Gina and Sarah are getting bored. Um, 13, Gina, how many grams of dextrose are in a 500 ml bag of B10W? 50 grams of dextrose. Good job. Who got 13, 50 grams of dextrose again? 14, Sarai. How many grams of dextrose are in a one liter or a thousand ml bag of B10W? Who got 100, who got 100 grams of dextrose? Hands up. The dextrose has to be correct, huh? As well. Number 15, Megan. How many grams of dextrose are in a 50 ml bag of D10W? Five. Five grams of dextrose. 11 and 12. Who got that one? Okay, we'll get back to 11 and 12. 11, Stefan, you ready? How many grams of dextrose are in a 1,000 ml bag of D5W? 50 grams of dextrose. Who got that one? Hands up. Okay, you there, Karen? Um, Hello? Number 12. <laughs> number 12? Yeah. Uh, 2.5 grams of dextrose. Good job. 2.5 grams of dextrose for number 12. Who got that one? Good job. Who got all correct? And stop. Continue working on the problems. I'm going to give you more practice problems. Oh, I already gave it to you, right? See, I need more coffee. Any questions? Any questions on this topic? Um, for, I'm on the dot on my goal for number, master percentage today. How would you divide it by when it's like a quarter? What you do, you if it's easier for you, convert your quarter to 0 0.25. Then you can proceed. Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. one divided by four is 0 0.25, mm -hmm. right? And then half is 0 0.5. Yes. No. The remainder 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Work on whatever you can on the practice problem and the allegations with bio. Okay. But I'm not leaving you alone. The model will have that. Okay. Any questions on this topic? Okay. I expect you to watch videos that are at your fingertips on allegations. So it's not the first time you're watching me or seeing me do allegations. Okay. You have good references on Blackboard that I sent. It's in your, you found it already, right? It's in your lab class. Okay, done.